Welcome to your Everyday Life Podcast with words of encouragement. We hope that you walk away today in your everyday walking around kind of life, feeling energized by the words of encouragement you are about to hear. Each week, the message will inspire you in your plain old ordinary life. Knowing that Jesus is there with you every step of the day, and not somewhere far off, will give you new perspectives of your daily life. You can find us online at youreverydaylife.org. Go there and subscribe so you can get new weekly devotional blog posts in addition to the many posts on site. So be encouraged in your everyday life. And now, here are your hosts, Scott Ramsey and his wife, Carmen. Welcome, everyone, to Your Everyday Life podcast. We're glad you're with us today, and we have a special guest with us, Paul Birch. Hey, Paul. Yeah, welcome, Hi. Paul. Good, good to have good you. Good to be here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, Paul is with us from Indiana. Actually, Paul, we're up from Florida in Indiana with you. So that, you're not with us. We're with you, right? Uh, indeed, yeah. and yeah. it's been a long time. So it has thanks, been. For, it has thanks been. for the visit. Yeah, yeah. It's exciting to be here and reconnect with you. And, and just so everybody online knows a little bit more about you, Paul. We're going to have Carmen do a little more formal introduction. You want to go ahead and introduce Paul? Sure. All right. Paul actually hails from Greenfield, Indiana. He got his undergraduate degree from Evan, the University of Evans, Evansville. I can't talk today. Excuse me. Um, his <laughs> master's degree at Ball State and master's in psychology, in fact. Um, he's been married to Roxy for 33 years. They have two children, Dylan, who's 29. Yep. And Gracie, who's 23, or Grace, who's 23, used to be Gracie, <laughs> Gracie way back yeah. when. Um, he got involved in 1980, came to the Lord through InterVarsity. And Let's come back to that. He was, we will. He was so impacted by that that in 1985, he started with them full time and it, to yeah. this day is still with InterVarsity, yeah. which is amazing and, and awesome. Um, but we're going to let him take that away or take away with Yeah. Him. And I have a question first. Oh, okay. so yeah. 1980, Paul, when 1980, did you like, that's when you first made that decision to follow Christ, right? Yeah. So I, yeah. I had grown up in a, okay. a church home and okay. mom and dad thought it was important to go to church. We did that every, every Sunday for the okay. most part uh-huh. But you know, like a lot of people, it never really connected. It was okay. kind yeah. of what good Midwestern people do on Sunday. And so yeah, it wasn't yeah. until really I went to college and met some other people who okay. were clearly experienced Jesus in ways that I never had. And I okay. found that very, very odd and yet also very attractive. And okay. um, yeah. actually, on, as best as I remember, Christmas Eve, 1980, oh, okay. I committed oh. my life to Christ. Yeah. So, Paul, I just yeah. have to make this distinction here. You're actually older than me. But... But not as wise. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I But I, I'm actually, that would make me, I think, eight, nine, nine months older than you, eight or nine months older than you spiritually. Okay. It was okay. A, actually, April 1st of 1980 Very is when good. I accepted wow. Christ. Wow. Yeah. All so, right. same year. Wow. Well, That's going way back, isn't it, Paul? <laughs> it is. But I think it illustrates that really important things are going on in that 18 to 21, 22 years. And we'll come back to that. I really think that. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that, that's exciting to hear because, you know, you know, some people grew up in, you know, being around the church setting and some of us didn't, Mm -hmm. um, some of us did on special occasions. um, Sure. And, you know, we all come from different walks of life. And so that's what we're excited about Paul is hearing about your everyday walk with Christ and what that looks like. And so um, you wanted to pick up Carmen with where he experienced Christ in college and then how that turned into full-time ministry. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. Well, how that started for you, what were the people that God obviously brought across your path Mm -hmm. that intrigued you to want to seek him out, to know more about him? Yeah. Well, um, I mentioned I'd grown up in church. It was one of the, uh, a mainline denomination, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, good people. Um, But really it was, you know, as they say, going through the motions a little bit, sing Mm -hmm. the songs, Mm -hmm. listen to the sermons, go to youth group, that kind of thing. Nothing wrong with it, but it wasn't particularly impactful. We did have a... uh, a couple who started going to church that became the youth sponsors. And this is, you know, you having so much background and 
youth ministry, it, it I had never met anyone um, that that followed Jesus in a meaningful way and actually took seriously like what it would look like for that to impact every area of, okay. of their life. Yeah. So that was yeah. that was the first kind of interesting, intriguing person that I met. Um, okay got involved. I have no idea why they necessarily landed at, at this particular church because they're just, it just wouldn't have made a lot of sense knowing what I know now, but they were there. And I think there yeah. was for a very good reason. I met some other <laughs> yeah. people uh, once I went to school and uh, again, same thing, just had not met people who authentically tried to follow Jesus and it really meant something to them. And uh, I was in one of those seasons of life where I was asking some pretty big questions about what life is about. I saw that you had a podcast on purpose in life. That was a huge theme for my life. And so those things began to come together. Yeah. And Carmen and I find it interesting in, in our life Mm -hmm. um, that um, God brings people across your path, probably because somebody's praying for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, it just doesn't happen by chance. Like, oh man, that was coincidence, right? But but exactly. for some reason, he brought this couple to your church Absolutely. where you were and God's thinking, eh, Paul doesn't know it right now, but I got some plans for him. Yeah. And, I think yeah, that's and exactly they right. invested in you and you saw something different in yeah. it. And Yes. Wow, here you are today. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exactly right. Yeah. And we look back at those same kind of things, don't we? Like, man, we didn't even see it at that moment, but here's what God was doing. It was an amazing thing. Yeah. And then maybe to where we get later, but just we all probably have these significant people in our life that mm-hmm. intersected our lives at crucial times. And, yeah. you know, I always think, like, where would I be <laughs> if such and such a relationship yeah. hadn't crossed my path? And, yeah. you know, who are those? top two or three people that if they had mm. crossed yeah. paths, I, I really don't know what my spiritual trajectory yeah. would have been. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. So then you jumped into, as, as Carmen mentioned with inner varsity, um, mm-hmm. I mean, you were experiencing that, um, as somebody that had, had gotten involved with it and you were gaining the personal effects from that. Um, So you were growing personally, but then um, there was an opportunity for you to, Hey, this is a direction I feel pulled. And so right out of college. Well, we're out of grad school. So I I don't know what it says about, you know, you go to 18 years (laughs) of school and then I get a master's degree. Mm -hmm. And so a little bit of surprise probably for my family and whatnot. But, but (laughs) I think what was going on there is, is I just realized that uh, what were the things that were most life giving to me? What were the things that were really um, uh, most important to me? And it, it wasn't my academic work. It was the stuff I was doing in ministry mm-hmm. um, at that time. And mm-hmm. the opportunity to, to to actually do that full time and be developed was was really attractive to me. So, mm-hmm. well, yeah, let's take a little bit of a turn here. Um, Carmen has actually become a little bit of a can we call her a fisherman? Oh, fisher person. Oh, nice. Fisher woman. Good. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, I so, cast a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So casting, yeah. Uh, and um, so, you know, when we got to, to Florida, yeah. uh, as yeah. you know, we, um, I'm going to use the word culture here. Yeah. You know, we had the fishing culture up here, lakes and streams and ponds and maybe rivers. White maybe. River. Yeah. Oh, or the Wabash River. Yeah, yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then we get to Florida, and now it's salt water. Salt water. Mm-hmm. A whole different. Yeah, not a whole different. I mean, similarities, obviously. But yeah. now you're fishing for a different culture of fish. Can That's we right. call them culture? Yeah, <laughs> different no. type of fish. It's a different. So, exactly. so there were some things you could do differently. But so you know that our our oldest Michael, uh, oh, he loves to fish. fish. Matter of fact, yeah. we talk about when. When he was living in Indianapolis in an apartment complex, you know, around the retention <laughs> pond, uh, yes, he had a second story balcony. apartment yeah. balcony, and oh. he fished off the Seriously. balcony. He fishes <laughs> yeah, off the balcony. He, he was no, just that serious about yeah. it. Yeah. So, 
Uh, <laughs> so when he moved to Florida, of course, we both jumped in uh, into saltwater fishing yeah. and have had some good times there. But, um, yeah. you know, we, I'll, I'll share this real quick and then let you share your experiences. But, you know, I remember how we I grew up in our family fishing on the Wabash River. So we grew up on the river. The river was, for all practical purposes, Mm -hmm. life-giving. Our life revolved around it. We caught fish from it. We ate fish from it. Um, Family gatherings revolved around that. And so there was a lot going on with that and uh, learned a lot about life and Mm -hmm. family and fishing. Um, So I met you later in life after all that experience and found out that you were a fisherman. Yeah. So... And you're Modestly. pretty serious. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> I, I enjoy it a lot more than I'm successful at it. I'll say that. But, okay. but um, I, I have enough success to keep me, keep me <laughs> at it. Keep you yeah. enjoying yeah. it. <laughs> now living in Bloomington, I have a little more water around me to, okay. Certainly. to, to, Certainly. to get better. <laughs> now, for some reason, I remember you as a, like, uh, for some reason, I think of you as like being really good at catching crappie. Really? Wow. Yeah. I wish totally I was like, off base. I, I have had a couple of good moments catching crappie, okay. but, but I wish I could, yeah. I wish I could replicate them more. I'm more of a just large mouth. Large mouth bass. Yeah. 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 If I'm in Michigan, I like to fish for small mouth. But, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, certainly. certainly. Yeah. So, okay. So there's a scripture that yeah. you're familiar with and that I think is on your heart to, to share a little bit about yeah where maybe um, some of the disciples, before they were disciples, they were out fishing. They had some expertise and knowledge mm-hmm. in that area. Yeah. And there was this person that came by, um, by the name of Jesus, yeah. <laughs> and had a different plan for him. But some parallels there. Anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so Luke 5 is a real helpful place to start there. Okay. In Luke 5, we meet... Uh, Peter and um, Jesus asked Peter if he can use his boat, push off from shore so he mm, can teach. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, pretty good principle there. Peter lets Jesus use his stuff. Huh. So, um, and because of it, lots of crowds get to hear the word of Jesus. But then mm-hmm. Jesus turns his attention particularly to Peter mm-hmm. and uh and says something very odd to this very experienced professional fisherman. It says, um, throw your nets out on the other side and you'll, you'll get a catch. And Peter and the, his friends are, they, you know, and this hard for me to wrap my mind. They are professionals. They do this. They've made their living. They've been out all night, fruitless night of fishing. I can relate to that. <laughs> you know? And, um, but the word is throw, throw the net over, mm-hmm. over on the other side and you'll get a catch. And that's, you know, the famous line is like, we've worked hard all night, Lord, but because you say so, Mm -hmm. okay. And they do. And, you know, the story is that they catch boat sinking, net breaking amounts of fish Mm -hmm. and just a a ridiculous, absurd amount of fish. And that, that becomes this really sacred moment for Peter Mm -hmm. because uh, he realizes that I'm not just, not just talking to the local rabbi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. And uh, and that's one of these defining moments for Peter where Jesus says to Peter, yeah, you know what just happened? Well, from now on, you'll be fishing for people. You know what I mean? And so that, that picture of this massive boat sinking, net breaking, catch of fish says, this is, this is your life. And Mm -hmm. that's going to happen as a result of following me. And so, you know, it's, it's meaningful for us because it means that uh, that's kind of the invitation to any Jesus follower is if we follow him, he's going to make us a fisher of people, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I thought that would be a worthy thing to talk about on your everyday life of just, there's nobody that's nobody's not uncomfortable about giving away our faith or talking about our faith or fishing. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, one thing we all have in common, you know, mm-hmm. is we're all really weirded out at the thought of yeah. sharing our faith and we all yeah. need to grow in it. So it feels like yeah. a relevant topic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, I'm thinking that as you're sharing this story, that this isn't just something like, 
yeah, this is a good idea. Right. But I mean, you, right. you really have put your life. I mean, this is, this is your everyday life. And my guess is if we had to guess Carmen, <laughs> that um, even if you weren't um, working with and through inner varsity, mm-hmm. probably still be who you are. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, going back to our early conversation, it's really like, where would we be if it wasn't for that friend or that family okay. member yeah. or that person who, who took a risk to be awkward over mm-hmm. a period of time? Maybe it was one conversation, maybe it was many, yeah. but where would yeah. we be if someone hadn't taken a risk, mm-hmm. broken some social rules, <laughs> maybe, to... Mm-hmm introduce these kind of conversations with Jesus. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think we all just are really nervous about evangelism and, and yet it's not just for the super spiritual. Um, Mm -hmm. we're all going to really look different in our language and styles of evangelism. A lot of people have done a lot of work in that Mm -hmm. thinking about how people are gifted differently and how they'll share that. But if we can figure out how God has wired us, God can use us. Yeah. So Paul Birch, Fisher of Men. Um, <laughs> and so you're using this tool. That's how I were uh, called InterVarsity oh, yeah. mm-hmm. to be able to reach people with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So um, you have, you are a missionary. Um, you're not in some foreign country, though. You are kind of. The foreign country of the college, yeah, you know, college crowd, sure, right? Sure. Um, on their campus, in their territory, in their everyday life, right. um, as a messenger of Jesus Christ, yeah. reflecting his life. Yeah. And so why 18 to 20? What, yeah. what, I mean, we're talking about a, a huge missionary field that, I mean, they, maybe some of them even grew up in a Christian home, but now they're away at college. <laughs> You're oh, working yeah, with a, yeah. like, hey, I'm free finally. And I, that's the last thing I'm thinking of is somebody oh, sharing the gospel with me. I'm here maybe to learn. Yeah, to learn, I, you know, I, my career, my 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 future. But, man, I'm going to have some fun on that. Yeah, so you're, wor- you're working with a, quite a diverse crowd. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, we can just think back what we were going through at age 18 to 22, the questions we were asking, we, yeah. you know, we were pursuing fun, probably, you know, certainly pursuing relationships, <laughs> um, trying to figure out what we wanted to do. Um, there's just a lot of big questions in life going on then. Yeah. And I think for many people they're they are away from mom and dad and they have the opportunity. If, if they came from a faith background, they have the opportunity to say, is this really mine? Do I want to continue in this mm-hmm. or do I need to figure this out for myself? Yeah. You know, increasingly, you know, our experts will tell us we're in this post-Christian age where just fewer and fewer people have any experience with Jesus or with the church and Painfully, uh, many that do have really hurtful experiences with the church. So we're at a very, I think, very different place in the conversations we're having with that age group yeah. than even when we would have been students for sure. It's just really changed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and honestly, uh, we're we're in learning mode right now. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they're calling it Gen okay. Z, you know, yeah. generation. Mm-hmm. So this generation just is asking different questions. They have different background. They have a lot different problems. I mean, than than maybe we would have talked about when we were yeah. when we were so, in that age. So you've probably seen that through the years. Then I never even thought about yeah. that perspective. Just different the different generations. generations that come through since 1980, right. yeah. and they all evolve based on their upbringing. And so it yeah. it culturally it is different every time they come in. What's been? Would you say probably mm-hmm. one of your most maybe difficult or maybe most poignant moments or Mm -hmm. just, or a particular group that there was something that I really stretched you, I guess, in trying to reach out or something. Oh man, I'm, I'm in a stretching moment right Right now. now. I mean, we're in a absolute, I mean, besides being in the COVID-19 pandemic, we're in a Mm -hmm. pandemic of anxiety Mm -hmm. and depression. I mean, you can hardly 
talk to a young person. Um, hopefully that's not an overstatement. A ton of young people will talk about anxiety in their life mm -hmm. in some kind of debilitating way. Mm -hmm. More and more students are in therapy. Um, and good news is that's more normal. But they've just got a bunch of junk that they're carrying around in life. And they, they don't necessarily have mm -hmm. a healthy faith background mm -hmm. to help them navigate it. So we're really talking to it. I mean, it really is crossing cultures. Yeah. You know, and I've, you know, Roxy and I lived overseas for a couple of years, uh -huh. you know, That's and right. I would yeah. say this is, is right. this is probably no less a cross-cultural experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So you have people from all walks of life, all kinds of things going on, but the message never changes, right? Mm -hmm. It's just how, right. how do you communicate that to them? Absolutely. Where they are? Yes. Yeah. The unchanging message of Jesus mm -hmm. is unchanging yeah. um we've how we get into the conversations uh, i think the particular presenting needs and presenting questions people have are really different um so we're we're trying to figure that out and, and you know what though I, I think were you gonna say something sorry oh i just no go ahead well i was just thinking about you you mentioned the word needs and mm -hmm. it's interesting because i always you, this doesn't come across right Gram grammatically, mm -hmm. uh, it's not good English, but Jesus was the best at being a need meter. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what he did, right? He he met people where they are, what their needs were. Yeah, um, that's where he was. Um, so that's yeah. that's where you are. Like you come a whole not whole different group, but a group of people that have their needs are different than ever before ever changing and Jesus is able to meet them. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so part of our job, and I think this is in terms of everyday life, all the people you, you know, we interact with in work, mm -hmm. but it, you know, and I'm in this weird thing of full-time ministry, but for people who are in all kinds of other walks of life, part of our job is how do we remove the obstacles that keep people from finding Jesus as mm -hmm. the ultimate source okay. of yeah. meeting their needs. Mm -hmm. Um, we want to go often, we would like to go straight to Jesus, but uh, there's this deep hurt that happened at a church years ago. There's this traumatic experience that happened. Um, there's this deep disappointment in their life. Mm -hmm. And like, we just have to like one by one mm -hmm. walk through those obstacles. And, um, sometimes we have an answer. Sometimes just our presence yeah. is, you, you know, yeah. uh, is, is what is needed. Well, yeah. what does that, uh, I was trying to look at, you've done work at I, Indiana State, Rose Holman, um, University of Evansville, you <laughs> also Franklin College and some other areas. Yeah. What does InterVarsity look like within the college? Just like that initial engagement or that initial, like, how do you get the word out there in the colleges? And I know that, you yeah. know, it's mm. through people, but just initially, how do you start to engage a call, you know, students in a college? Yeah. Um, well, I, honestly, COVID has like, <laughs> everything's different. Yeah. Everything is different now. You know, yeah. if you'd asked me that mm -hmm. two years ago, I'd have it be a There'd be some more social functions yeah. probably, right? Or yeah, you just can't gather. gatherings. You know, yeah. No, we've got back to that a little bit. So yeah. Yeah. but back in the day, you know, back two, three years ago, it's all that, you know, student organizations find a way to get out there, whether it's social media, signage, doing events, those mm -hmm. kind of things. That's really been taken away from us. So mm -hmm. maybe more than ever before, personal relationships, personal friendships that are authentic, that yeah. are long term, that build trust is much more important than just dispensing quick hit information mm -hmm. about Jesus. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, Frankly, a lot of our, I mean, you know, a lot of the evangelism training, well-meaning and great churches participated in, in mm -hmm. decades past has been how to have this instant conversation, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, dispense some facts and ask them if they're ready to believe in those facts. And, and boy, I just think that ship has really sailed. Yeah, so if I you agree. try to... You, you, if you don't have relationship and trust and mm -hmm. authenticity, the truths about Jesus are going to yeah. be really tough to, to 
for them to receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like, Paul, as I hear you sharing that, that it's just really coming around full circle to where it needs to be. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that right. is you remember back in the earlier days of, you know, when we were coming through that time, you had the big events. Oh, yeah. you know, there was, yes. there was Keith Green, there was Carmen. Uh, Carmen. Not me. <laughs> Carmen, Carmen, the singer, okay. Carmen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Billy Graham and his yes. big crusades. And you invite a friend to that, get them to where they hear the gospel, and then get them to respond. And then you off they go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and but isn't yeah. that kind of like? And, and I'm not saying those weren't real right. situations. And there's a lot of people's lives that were changed forever because of sure. that. But a lot of times that's that seed that fell in shallow soil mm. sprouted up real quick. Um, but then all contact was lost. There was no depth to it. The roots mm. didn't settle in because it wasn't in good soil and right. they disappeared. Um, yeah. We saw that in, in, you know, some of our youth for Christ ministry and our outreach. We've all seen that. But it, you look at the relationships that you developed and, you know, you're talking about, you know, it's more of an individual connection and long term yeah. those are the relationships that seem like they they gain some traction and and they begin to grow and, and right. happen over a period of time well i've never seen a, a season where people are more disenchanted with mm -hmm. kind of big event um christianity whether mm -hmm. it's you know um whether it's mega church whether it's events that like there is just a real suspicion of, and that doesn't mean that there's not great things happening in those places. Right. There yeah. are, we've all benefited mm -hmm. from, we've Certainly. benefited from those things and yeah. in, in those, those settings. So mm -hmm. it's not that, but the, the suspicion is high. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think people need that one person that they know uh, that they authentically follow yeah. Jesus and they can actually bring their questions to them. And they're a safe person to bring their doubts, their skepticisms, yeah. their, their questions yeah. to, because yeah. if they have to have it all to, you know, a lot, a lot of people's story is that if you have questions, doubts, you don't have it all together, that door is sh yeah. shut. Like yeah. just come on, just get yeah. it together, have faith, believe, right, you know, right, whatever. Right, right. And yep. that's not what it's about. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, but you think about though, if we go back to those times, really probably the ones that did, that were successful relationships started with Jesus at that time, probably had somebody that had already invested in that person, got them to that event and then took them from there on that journey right. um, as kind of a Paul Timothy type relationship right. or whatever that might've been. Um, that's probably where we saw the success from those events, not the event mm -hmm. itself. The event itself was a great conduit or great channel, but I love events. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there, it, it still yeah. comes it down fun. to that. Yeah. And so, okay, we can't do the big events, but that doesn't matter because this, the gospel comes down to that personal relationship with Jesus with mm -hmm. you one-on-one -on -one, and you're a reflector of that. You reflect that relationship. Um, yes. And I always like this part. I think it was Francis, St. Francis of oh, Sisi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Use words when necessary. Yeah, right. Um, right. And you know, you, you are very good at doing that. That's why, you're in that field. That's mm. your strength. That's what God had called you to. And, and you actually, and, and you did, we didn't really mention this, but you actually train other people to do that. Um, and, and that means that you're, what does that mean? I, yeah. I shouldn't say what that means. You, well, what does that mean to you when you're, <laughs> you have other people that you're um, sending out? Into the yeah. And, and the older I get, so I'm, you know, I'm 60. So obviously um, my, my relationship with, you know, 19, 20 year olds is different than it used to be. So mm -hmm. yeah, I am much more of a training developer role, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I, I think part of uh, my role or our role as older people is sometimes it's to help people unlearn mm -hmm. everything wow. that they <laughs> thought effective evangelism was. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> just share the, you know, fill in the blank with your gospel outline, Romans Road or Four yep. Spiritual law, Laws or whatever, yep. just, share that or um i don't know it, quite formulaic kind of things and and somehow we have to give permission for people to like you know it's okay to not just be a dispenser of theology and information mm -hmm. why don't you learn how to be an authentic friend learn how to ask really good questions learn how to listen really well 
uh, learn how to invite people into community so that they meet other people who are different than you. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, so I think part of it is we, we've just relied so heavily on dispensing content. Mm. They need embodied, people need embodied content. They need to see, and I think that was what maybe I was seeing when I was 18, 19, I saw yeah. a Jesus centered life that was actually embodied and lived out in flawed human people. Yeah. yeah. You know? Authentic. It, I mean, that's what people want is yeah, authenticity. And, yeah. I, People don't need perfection from mm -hmm. us as Christians. They they do need a level of consistency. Mm -hmm. They need humility and they need authenticity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. We can get a lot of mileage if we just are doing that. And maybe, you know, it's probably worth saying too. Also, if, if we're just growing in Christ ourselves. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of tools, skills, and, you mm -hmm. know, I was thinking about, oh, what would be helpful for, for people to know? But... But honestly, if we just are uh, ordering our lives around knowing Jesus and yeah. arranging, you know, our lives and our schedules to know him, good things will happen. You will yeah. be an aroma of Christ. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. could do a whole lot worse than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. And I love that you bring it back down to that because it, it is that personal relationship with Christ. And um, we were discussing this a little bit before we started the, mm -hmm. the, the recording here today is that. Uh, to know Jesus is to know Jesus. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just like it, if we were spending more time with you, uh, you know, we would know you in a deeper way and probably become more of a natural thing to say, hey, by the way, you know, Paul and Roxy, you know, and yeah. hey, they're really cool people. And and by the way, what you don't know about Paul, a lot of people do, but if they're watching this podcast, they don't know that you're actually a musician, too. So I had to bring that into it. Yeah. Well, Matter of fact, we tried to get Paul to do a little ditty tonight. Well, he's got a new CD out, and you you what produced three others? Um, uh, so I've got four out. I'm working on a fifth right now. Oh wow, that's okay. what I was working on today before you got here. Okay, yeah. cool. so so we'll have a little clip on here um, that you'll be able to see of some stuff Paul's done yeah. that. Uh, Probably come do back a to link it, or right? something yeah, to yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah you can get yeah. to a spotify link or yeah, something like yeah. that sure so maybe we'll do another podcast and have paul actually play live <laughs> that would be awesome try it. but anyway but you know that's uh the uh as you know um our fourth of july parties we had you oh and your gosh, band that was a blast yeah, yeah we loved, loved that. yeah, yeah that awesome. so and, and you know that's uh, another tool or venue you use to share the gospel yeah. And, and I have to tell everybody this, that, so, you know, you, you hear about Christian musicians, you know, we, we listen to them, see them all the time. Right. And go to those concerts. Um, and, and a lot of times they're worship experiences and, and things, but, but Paul and, and, uh, you know, the guys that he played in a band, I'm assuming some those guys still playing a band with you and you still, do oh, yeah, we're stuff. still, yeah, still, still playing going together. Like, same is that these guys don't always play Christian music. Yeah. But what they do is they play some mainstream music that connects with people. And during that, they're reflecting Christ mm -hmm. in their words that they share in between. And even some of the music they, they actually have written and played, you know, reflects Christ as well as some of the cover tunes that you guys play. There's just something yeah. about live and music, it's, though, you know, yeah, gathering yeah. around live music. And, yeah. and, yeah, and you don't just, in matter of fact, I don't even know if you guys actually do that in churches. You do it. Where everyday people hang out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, you know, it's funny. We've been playing together for um, I don't know, thirty-five years, years yeah. a long time. Same guys. It's yeah. really an interesting thing. So yeah. um, <laughs> that doesn't normally happen with with amateur bands, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, our our venues have shifted to mm. um, a lot more wineries and breweries and, yeah. and pubs and those kind of settings. Yeah. And part of that um, is because that's where live music is mm -hmm. held, but, but, mm -hmm. but there really is actually, you know, the theology driving that, um, mm -hmm. and it has for many years and yeah. it, it's kind of been a, a creedal verse for me. Jesus was the friend of drunkards and sinners. Mm -hmm. And, um, so it, it always seemed like our tendency in the, the Christian subculture was just mm -hmm. to, be friends with each other and entertain each other. And mm -hmm. I, I think 
one one expression that we all have to figure out is what does it mean to be a, a friend of people who are unchurched and irreligious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, the music thing is just one expression that we, we're sure. trying to do yeah. in that. Yeah. But that would be a small piece by, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. of it. But, yeah, so yeah. because I think sometimes we do see if, if we've been walking with Jesus for some time, we can tend to see uh, people who are far from God as the enemy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. Can, yeah, I Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's it's we yeah. them, yeah. us mm-hmm. them, and you know, it's like, well, uh, that that person that's really a mess, and they they may indeed be a mess, just like you were a mess. You yeah, know, exactly. They, we're all a bit uh, of a mess. <laughs> the, they're made in God's image. Mm-hmm. Christ died for them. Yeah. They, you know, they need some person who's going to intersect their their life that will. Yeah. Uh, yeah plant a seed or be an aroma of Christ. And so, Definitely. you know, we're doing that, whether we're at the factory or the post office or the well, school yeah. or in business or Certainly. wherever we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. You know, God calls us all to be his hands and feet. And when we talk about him meeting us where we're at, like he uses other people to meet us where we're at. And when you talk about playing in pubs and things like this, we were just talking earlier about me being saved and I was actually saved in a brewery. Yeah, um, you yeah, know, yeah, I, with yeah. a dear friend, and but it was a point. It was a very, I mean, I knew what was happening. We didn't even really discuss it, but I accepted Christ yeah. when when I was at the Terre Haute Brewing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people have observed that this the small group. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk about small groups all the time in in Christian circles, but mm-hmm. the small group mm-hmm. for people outside church is the, is the local watering hole is the pub. That's where yeah. people talk, do life, complain, encourage each yeah. other, mm-hmm. yeah. try to cheer. But they, you know, they, they don't have the tools that we have. They don't have, mm-hmm. you know, so, yeah. Yeah. so it makes sense to intersect people in, in some of those settings. Everyone's not called to do that. No, no. Everyone's but not called to do that, but who he's called or you're called or right. I'm called is an right. entirely different audience. Absolutely. And so we speak to certain you know, and I just, yeah, you know. but, but that's a lovely story. And I, I, I mean, it, it illustrates something pretty profound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you said that, I was like, yeah, I know a little bit about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So Paul, for, for you to do this, obviously you, your relationship with, with Christ is, is an everyday relationship. If I can say it that way, mm-hmm. it's, it's a deep relationship. So what does that look like if somebody's like, well, how is Paul able to do this? How is he able to communicate the gospel? Why is that important to him? Why does he see this as such a mission? It's because you're grounded in Christ. But what does that look like? What if somebody like, well, gosh, what does that need to look like for me? And and so if I'm looking at Paul, what does that look like? And is that something that I, I need to be looking at? How, how does yeah. that everyday walk look? Yeah, uh, it is unique for each of us, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, so this is just one one picture of of that. Um, you know, I used a phrase earlier of just ordering your life around following Jesus. So mm. it part of the battle for us is like how do we how do we keep Jesus from being a compartmentalized part of our life? And yeah. and, and uh, certainly, I'm all about Jesus on Sunday morning mm-hmm. or uh, at mm-hmm. this. Christian gathering or something like that, but Easter I, or, or Easter <laughs> or something that, but I really struggled like in the workplace or I really started. So, yeah. yeah. So we have to, we have to put some practices and I, I heard a person say once that um, people who are growing in Christ um, have three things in common. There are, are people in their life that influence them. There are practices that they're engaged in and they're, our experiences that they are having. Mm -hmm. And I think so that that's not, that's not a bad start, but Mm -hmm. I think what we want to avoid is we don't want to get, you know, I became a Christian at 19 and we all know stories of people who they became, you know, they were baptized or they became a Christian decades ago and they've not really changed or transformed one iota since then. Mm -hmm. They've, you know, and the whole yeah. point of this thing is to be more like Jesus. Yeah. Is yeah. to allow Jesus. So how do how do I order my life in such a way so that Jesus mm-hmm. can transform? So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, certainly. Time in Scripture, um, I do yeah. try to 
try to have time in scripture, um, mm-hmm. uh, the most mornings, um, prayer, you know, everyone has to have a, a prayer life. It's the amazing thing. We get to actually talk to the living God mm-hmm. and, yeah. and have him talk to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So whatever that looks like for me, I've really been helped by writing my prayers in a journal recently. Mm-hmm. That's not everybody's thing. Yeah. It helps me. Mm-hmm. Um, in, the older I get, silence and solitude is actually important. Mm-hmm. So we started talking about fishing. One of the good things about fishing is yeah. that what does it do? It engages me with God's creation. It puts me in isolation so that I'm just, mm-hmm. I have the opportunity. My head is a little bit clearer to connect with God. Mm-hmm. Um, community, I mean, the people I mentioned, you know, is really important. It, Christian life was not meant to be lived solo. Mm-hmm. And most of us have tried that at one point or another, and it just we just don't get and very far. You've been forced to do that, <clears throat> or or, or, or pandemic, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So, so a lot of people were isolated from yes, yeah. So now you have to work extra hard to enjoy yeah. some some version of community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, we'll get back to that here yeah. starting yeah. to. So, mm-hmm. and then also sometimes there are just these fork in the road experiences that we have. It may be, um, I know Carmen, you went on a mission trip that was, mm-hmm. I think pretty transformative yes. for you. Mm-hmm. And often it is a cross cultural experience that God uses to like mm-hmm. get our attention. Mm-hmm. We just kind of have to get out of our, own little world sometimes yeah. to see God in fresh ways. So people, practices, and experiences mm-hmm. is what John Wartburg, um, one, one author I like a lot, um, has said is just really key to people who are transforming in Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. So, Paul, as you think about um, people that are watching this and maybe they're struggling with their everyday walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. What kind of encouragement, if you can put it, I don't know that you can, but if you can put it in a sentence or two, how would you encourage them? Well, you um, you talked about knowing Jesus. Mm -hmm. We just just cannot know Jesus without hearing from his word. So there there needs to be some kind of relationship, even if it's a few minutes a day. you know, the, the four biographies of Jesus, the four Gospels is a wonderful place to just bask in who Jesus is mm-hmm. and get to know him. Not not just filling our head with knowledge, nothing wrong with that, but right, like, right. what would it mean for me to actually encounter this Jesus mm-hmm. in my life and let him do the things yeah. that he, I read about him doing? Um, I think the everyday life with Jesus starts with a personal relationship um, like that, but it doesn't end there. We've we experience Jesus in community because um, the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. So I need time with you to learn and see what God's doing in you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, it, it is interesting how many people we can talk to that have kind of disen- and not necessarily just because of COVID, but they mm-hmm. disengaged right. from community, mm-hmm. you know, it could be church hurt, any number of things that maybe yeah. are good reason, but, Boy, you want to give that a second chance. You want to find a way to have community. It's just going to be a very difficult thing to live yeah. this thing out every day mm-hmm. Okay, if you're by yourself. Yeah, I've realized as, as I've gotten older, sometimes you don't. Well, Scott and I are so I feel like we're like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> like you can't have one without the other. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so um, I have had thoughts of late, like, we're an island of Scott and Carmen, you know, and we have friends, but they're a distance away from us. And I like, I started, I have literally within this last year started physically reaching out to other women, to other, just, I just us. I'm like, we need, we can't be an island unto ourselves, you know, and what happens like, and you know, with him being, you know, nine years older than me, I, I'm like, odds are, unless something drastic happens that I would have to live this mm-hmm. life without him at some mm-hmm. degree. And it's, you know, and, and we we'll, younger people, you know, aren't necessarily, that's not even on their radar, mm-hmm. but it's so true throughout your entire life. You have to have what my daughter would call a tribe, you know, you do. and, and yes. some, some people, not yes, people, but people who, who will be honest with you, people who will call you out when you're, you're doing something that's not in alignment with, you know, with his word or with the person that they know you are, you know, that part of the reason that they, they are in community with you. So that is, I've been really intentional about that this year. Mm-hmm. That's been something 
because with um, just life is short. Well, and that's a key word is you're, you were intentional about it because Mm -hmm. I think we're kind of waiting for those relationships to happen and they, they probably won't. No, (laughs) it's like, it's like, do it except you have to calendar it. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. And Roxy and I are learning that we're trying to get better about taking initiative to reach out with people that are life giving, that Mm -hmm. are following Jesus. We have meaningful interchange with them. We think our presence helps them and they certainly help us. So, Certainly. but then just, it just doesn't fall on the calendar. We have to kind of make it happen. Yeah. yeah. It does. Mm-hmm. So Karma, closing thoughts. That was my closing thought. That was your closing <laughs> thought. That was that, my that closing was, thought. Yeah. So staying connected. I, I heard that from you. I heard you just sharing that. Um, so Paul, what about your closing thoughts to fishing, being a fisher of men, that everyday life? Yeah. Anything that pops out for you? Um, I, I will say this. I don't I think a lot of us have um, opted out of being a fishers of men because it's hard and mm-hmm. um, it's awkward. And we, we don't want to be that obnoxious person who, mm-hmm. who, mm-hmm. who uh, makes things harder for someone to come to Christ. So, so mm-hmm. we try to live kind of a risk-free life and, and, mm-hmm. and punt. We just kind of punt on evangel. And I, I, Maybe a parting word would be um, giving away our faith is, I think, a gift we need to unwrap. And I think we will hit a ceiling in our Christian life if we don't push through the awkwardness of learning to give our faith away. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I the, like. That. I think our I think our growth in I think our growth in Christ is actually really limited if we Mm -hmm. don't figure out how to give it away. It just wasn't, we just weren't intended to hoard the blessings of God. We were designed, you know, you know, it's a cliche, but it's really true. Blessed to be a blessing Mm -hmm. that that really needs to be true. So, um, and, and I think there is no awkward free way to give away our faith. You know, we just have to accept that we're going to probably break some, some, uh, normal social interaction when we begin asking people about their life and listening well and and all that but uh the fruit will be that we'll learn things about god and see him work in ways that we absolutely wouldn't if we weren't taking risks to uh invite others to take a closer look at jesus yeah Mm -hmm. certainly certainly so as i think about what all you've shared paul I, i think about um, it, it actually, and, it, and it's difficult because culture has trained us. We've allowed ourselves to be trained by culture that this isn't normal. <laughs> and so we feel awkward mm-hmm. about that relationship and how it might offend somebody else or how they, they may not accept us or all these things that go through these filters. And, and we, we didn't come back and reflect on this, but your, your master's was in psychology. Yeah. So the way people think and the way they're affected and how their past um, mm-hmm. defines a lot of things and the way they, they, they do life is to, to remap all that is yeah. a major thing, but that's where the word of God comes in. Yeah. And so I, I just think about that, that um, if, if we could encourage somebody through this podcast today. And that's to know that um, Jesus Christ is is so real and wants to have that everyday relationship with us that if if we can just somehow grasp that and allow it to become just a natural part of who we are, Mm -hmm. which is very difficult to do. I know we all struggle with that in different ways in, in the way we're perceived and Mm. and what we want for others and what they're going through and how we communicate that. And it does, like you mentioned earlier, it almost becomes like, okay, what's the right formula here, but just allow it to be a natural part of your life, whether you're doing it full time through a tool like InterVarsity or whether like for me, I'm a business coach within a franchise system or with Carmen and her real estate and short term Mm -hmm. rental Um, and people coming through that, that, you're reflecting Christ in just a natural everyday way that, yeah. I I just have a quick thought that when you said that, I feel like in general, 
um, we're a culture that we want to live the life of the path of least resistance. And yes. if, if it, is hard. We don't want to do it. We, we shrink away from it, yeah. but God never promises it'll be easy. He says it'll be worth it, but it, yeah. he never promises it'll be easy. And so I think in, you know, we have to take the path or the road less traveled. We have to get out of our comfort mm -hmm. zones. I think that's really what he calls a lot of us to do. What I hear you saying, yeah. what you're doing in inner varsity in the colleges, you know, you're, right. and you are helping others do that, but we have to get uncomfortable. It's yeah, necessary. Absolutely. And, and that, you know, that's not an invitation for us to be difficult people, obnoxious right. people, rude people, quite the opposite should be oh. true. It's just sharing your story. I and mean, that's what's uncomfortable, but that's, I think how God speaks because you have a story that I don't have. Scott yeah. has one. We have many people that have been on here with us. And people are longing to share their stories too. Yeah. Um, they're they're not yet Christian stories, mm -hmm. and so, and would love someone to listen to their their pain, their hurts, and and it gives us the chance to say, you know, would you mind if I just really briefly shared you know something that's been really helpful to me, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and or your story. We never we hardly ever think about just asking permission to like go to that place where we talk mm -hmm. about our faith, but. I think most people would say, yeah, yeah. sure. You know, I, I think so. I, but know, I think we're afraid. So we don't but, ask, but we, yeah. All I can do is say no. Right? The, that's the worst. It's the worst <laughs> that can happen is they'll say no. Yeah. 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 It really is. Yeah. So um, let me bring this to a close here. Sure. So, you know, the reason why we had you on here, Paul, is because, you know, we, Carmen and I, we look at your life, you know, along with Roxy, and we really admire you guys. Um, and we look at you as as steady rocks because of your relationship with Christ. And, you know, you know, regardless of what your backgrounds were, what you came through, um, you know, you found that relationship with Christ. And um, that has become a part of your everyday life. And so it's a natural thing. Um, that I want you all to see in Paul and his wife, Roxy, that it's just a natural thing that they reflect. And, and Paul happens to do that through InterVarsity, but he does that outside of InterVarsity. It's not like he stops doing that. Like, okay, it's five o'clock, we're done with work. <laughs> and so let's go live our other life now. I mean, it's a part of who you are. And that's that's how, you know, be blessed so that you can be a blessing. Right. Reminds me of Jabez. And Gosh, yeah. I need to bring this to a close because yes. now we can get into a whole other message. <laughs> yes, but, that's a whole other but thing. you know, Jabez said, um, "Bless me indeed." In other words, greatly bless me and expand my boundaries mm -hmm. that I could have an impact. Yeah, uh, that's, that's right. you know, I'm putting it into my own words now that we can have an impact, and that's how we're greatly blessed is that we're blessing Him by reflecting mm -hmm. Him. Because yeah. he has designed everyone to have a personal relationship with him. And he needs us to reflect who he is to others in order to do that, to connect with them and have that relationship. And this guy does it as well as anybody I know in, in his everyday life. And so I know he's going into humble mode now and probably kind of <laughs> blush a little bit. But I can say that about him. He's not going to say that about himself. But, Paul, we appreciate you being a part of our podcast and sharing. And we're hoping to have more in the future with you. But when you look at Paul Birch, that's what you get in that everyday walk that you would see in his life and that reflection of Christ. So um, You're very com kind. Thank coming you. back to the scripture, um, it's out of Matthew. Help me out here, Paul. Um, chapter four. Um, oh, gosh. Where is it? Uh, okay. So I'm stumbling here now. What are you looking for? Where Jesus called them to become. Oh, here, here it is. Verse 19. Ah, there you go. Okay. Paul said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so we look at that as being a, like, oh, not me. But it, 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 I know some people may not get this, but as you get to know Jesus, it becomes a natural part of your life because it's it's just an amazing life. Yeah. Um, to to follow him. 
and what he has in store for us, what he has in store for you. So I want to encourage you as you go from here to, as Paul and as we attempt to do, um, to make that a part of our everyday life, make Jesus a part of your everyday life. It's life changing. Thank you and be blessed. Thank you for joining us this week on Your Everyday Life Podcast. We pray that you were encouraged. Make sure to visit our website at youreverydaylife.org where you can subscribe and receive weekly devotional blogs from Scott. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Your Everyday Life. Be sure to give us a comment on how words of encouragement has inspired you and pass the word on to a friend who you know needs encouragement. Be sure to tune in again next week when once again we will look at everyday life topics and apply words of encouragement. Until then, stay encouraged by what you heard today and may you be greatly blessed.